<laughs> okay, welcome to everybody. This is Flexus Freedom for Life, Suzanne Shirley with the 15 Invaluable Laws of Growth. We are on chapter four tonight, and I am going to go ahead and mute everybody. Um, we're on chapter four tonight, and this is the law of reflection. We just finished the first three laws, which is the law of, um, I'm going to say the law of intentionality, the law of awareness, and the law of the mirror. And those three were incredible laws that we went over. Tonight is the law of reflection. I have quite a bit that I want to say, and so I'm just going to get to it. Um, when you pause to reflect, growth happens. This is John Maxwell. These are lots of nuggets with my take thrown in. That's basically what we're doing here. Okay. Um, when you pause to reflect, growth happens. And I will just say my own personal opinion here, and I want you guys to share at the end what your um, experience with reflection has been when you have taken the time to actually reflect and pause. When I have taken the time to sit quietly and study the Bible, to pray, to journal, or all of the above, or reflect on something, think about something, um, I have not consistently done that throughout my life. There have been lots of times where I have done it on a long stint or a short stint, and I have never been consistent in this practice. But when I have been, when at the time when I was, whenever I did, was doing this, my, my life was more meaningful than it ever had been. And I felt myself understanding more about whatever it was that I was thinking about, whatever I was reflecting about, whatever I was pondering, thinking, writing about, journaling, whatever I was reading about and then praying about, I felt like I learned it even more so I'm telling you something that there is something to be said about this law. I mean, it is, it's right. I journaled the entire time I lost weight the first time, that big, huge hundred pound weight loss. And I did it all on um, an online blog type thing where it was private. It was not published, but I mean, I just put it all out there. And I remember just really a lot of junk just started to come out because I was being honest with myself. Uh, just thinking about all the different things that had happened to me over the years that had gotten me to that point. So I'm just really, really, and you know, I'm going to also share with you when we get to a particular point, I'm starting to catch myself now that I'm reading John Maxwell and I'm studying John Maxwell. I'm starting to catch myself whenever I have situations that happen to me in real life now where I'm like, oh, darn, I could have handled that better. And I could have applied the law of X, Y, Z that I thought about with John Maxwell. And, you know, hindsight is always twenty twenty. but the fact that I'm starting to catch myself now and becoming more aware of what it is I'm saying or doing or not saying or not doing at the right times, uh, then, you know, I think that's a part of the growth process. So let's get started on this. Learning to pause allows growth to catch up with you. Follow effective action with quiet reflection, and from the quiet reflection will come even more effective action. And that's from Peter Drucker. Incredible. So John talks about his trip to Kiev um, in the Ukraine where people do not trust their leaders. And um, there's a reason why they don't trust their leaders, because their leaders are tyrants and in the Ukraine, he was told by the people that he was going to see that the leaders do not add value to others. I mean, you know, you're not going to find anybody trusting their leaders because the leaders are not adding value to people. So um, Jim Dornan, which is one of his good friends, had told him that in the country where the government was crooked and the leaders were crooked and selfish, being able to circumvent authority and working the system were seen as virtues. So being able to get around all these things where it's like a virtuous deal. I went to the green room, he said, right before he went out to speak to these people um, so that he could pause and reflect on what he had just learned. And he was feeling really emotional and um, he wanted to take some time to let his thinking catch up with his feelings. You know, I think that's so often we don't allow our thinking 
what should be thoughtful and deliberate, thinking meaning deliberation. We don't allow that to catch up with our feelings. We, we have all these feelings, but we don't combine reflective thought with it and therefore we make a mistake with our actions. But if we allow, if we allow some time to pause and reflect, when we're feeling all these things, we go find a place to be quiet and ask ourselves some very pointed questions, then we can come to a conclusion about some thoughts that we can have, that we can apply to our emotions and our feelings, and therefore take the right actions you know, in other words, like my mother always told me, don't go off half cocked, you know, like I always would just, but like a bull in a china closet, you know, so to speak, just ramrod all over, you know, have a quick reaction. I can't tell you how many times I have had to say that I'm sorry. I had to apologize to Mary tonight because I acted, I said something very flippant to her and acted like a know-it-all. Uh, I don't ever want to do that because I certainly don't know everything and I certainly am not the master of anything. So um, I am right in the trenches with all of you, and um, I readily admit that. Um, and I've had to do that a thousand times in my classroom, and I'll have to do it forever. I can tell you that. Apologizing is like part of my life. Um, so when he started to ask himself some questions, when he went and paused and took some time, and he asked himself, how am I feeling? Um, what could I do as a result of this? And um, how could I do that? In other words, I figure out what I want to do or how, what I could do. So how could I go about doing that? And he answered those questions for himself. And then when he finally went out to speak to the people, he, one of the first things he said, which he repeated to himself all that day and to everyone that he saw was, hi, my name is John and I am your friend. And so his number one goal was to show everybody in the Ukraine, in Kiev, that he loved them and that he was his, their friend. And if he could build a trust with them, then they would listen to him and they would take his advice and they would be close to him. Every time he would speak, he said, um, every time I speak, he said, the number one thing I want to do is to add value to people that I talk to. And the second thing he said he wants to always do is exceed the expectations of the person who invited me to speak. And um, I'll just share a recent, um, very quickly, a recent experience of mine. Um, and I honestly think that I could have handled it better, a lot better, but it, you know, you combine passion with shock and then you get a reaction and then you say something that you will maybe regret or you feel, you realize you could have handled it differently. And so I walked into a shop to purchase some gifts just this last weekend um, with Angela. And we had like 20 minutes before an appointment we had to go to. And so we walked into this shop and um, there was a girl that came over to me immediately and said, Hey, Suzanne, um, do you remember me? I'm such and such. We met each other in an AP conference. And an AP conference, meaning, okay, teacher, uh, Spanish teacher, because I didn't go to any conferences that weren't regarding Spanish. And, and I was like, oh, yeah. And I recognized her. I looked at her name tag, but I didn't remember her from Adam. And she's like, yeah, you probably don't remember me. And she said a few other things about herself. And I just quickly started talking to her. And, of course, I'm wearing Plexus. And she says, um, so... Uh, are you a Plexus ambassador and with a really excited look on her face? I said, yes. Oh my gosh. Yes. And I said, we love it. We are both Plexus ambassadors. We just love the products and everything about the company. And, and she said, are you still teaching? That's the next thing she said. Um, so it was going to change the subject according to her. She didn't think we were going to stay on Plexus. And, but it went right back to Plexus because I said, actually, no, I'm retired because of Plexus. And I follow that right up with some more. I've nearly tripled my teaching salary and I'm retired. I get to, you know, work my business part time or whenever I want. And there's a lot of time freedom that I've been given. Thank you to God. You know, it's just amazing what's happened in my health transformation is really incredible. And I said, what is it you love about Plexus? 
assuming I was going to hear that from her, something positive, you know, not comparing my journey to hers, but I thought that that's what she wanted to hear, something positive. She was going to share something positive. I said, who's your sponsor? Oh, B.B. Shattuck. B.B. Oh, I'm out, outing some names. But anyway, we love B.B. Shattuck. We went off about, oh, B.B.'s great. We love her. She's this, that, and the other, you know, Emerald Ambassador. And um, I said, so what do you love about Plexus? And she's like, well, actually, I only did Plexus for 15 days. And um, I just can't, um, you know, I couldn't ever remember to take my, my supplements. And, you know, you have to take them all, like, all day long. And it was just so confusing. And I, I, just, I just can't commit to something I don't believe in. <laughs> Notice that she ended up with a, an excuse. She didn't want to take responsibility for the fact that she only did Plexus for 15 days. And, of course, I'm not thinking about anything. I'm just, I'm just shooting off stuff. And um, I said, oh, really? 15 days? That's it? Well, well, no wonder you can't believe in something. You can't sell something you don't believe in. And how could you believe in it if you only did it for 15 days? I mean, I was kind of laughingly saying that. And I didn't mean to, but it's my belief and my, my passion that just flows out of me. And it sounds arrogant sometimes. And I felt so badly afterwards. I wish I could, I can't even remember her name. I'm not even friends with her on Facebook. So I wish that I could apologize at this point. Um, and I, well, anyway, long story short, that kind of ended right there. And um, I went off looking for something, grabbed it really quick, went and paid for it, kind of stood at the counter and talked to Angela. Can you believe that girl? Did you hear what she was saying? And Angela's like, yeah, you just can't create, you know, can't make this stuff up. It's just crazy. You know, and then I felt so bad that I had sort of offended her, even even though, I mean, she had only taken the products 15 days and just decided she wasn't going to anymore. I wanted to sort of apologize and patch things up before we walked out. So I went and found her, but I stuck my foot in my mouth even more. And it ended up being just not even, you know, I continually tried to convince her, basically. Um, I asked her more questions. She you know, I said, hey, I don't want to offend you. I felt like that's what I was doing. and I'm so sorry. It started off with that. And then it went to... Um, yeah, it's, it's not your fault. Don't worry about it. I just, I just can't commit to something. I just, I couldn't get, I couldn't get all the, the things down. I'm like, well, maybe you can go back and talk to her. No, it's, it's worthless. I'll never be off all these medications. I'm like, what medications? And it just went down from there. You know, my thyroid, this, that, and the other. I'm like, well, I'm off my thyroid medication. <laughs> and then it was just like, well, but I can't, but I did, but I can't, but I did, but I can't, but I did. And it was just like, it was pointless, see? And all I did was end up offending her some more. So I said, well, I really am sorry if, you know, I guess I'm just gonna have to go, we're late, and, and I just scuffled out of there. So long story short, I'm thinking that I could have gone over to the counter and applied the law of reflection and asked myself a couple of things. Just maybe quickly say, okay, I need, what do I need to do with this girl? Okay, answer to self, I need to add value to her. How can I add value to this girl? Go over and tell her how much you care about her and that's it. And how much you just wanted to help her and that you had no other intention whatsoever. Friend her on Facebook, make a personal connection and offer to be her friend. That would have solved everything. If I would have just taken the time two seconds to ask myself two questions at the counter when I was at the counter instead of blah, blah, blah about her, go over there and think about what I was going to do and add value. And I catch myself, am I adding value to this person? Sometimes in the middle of a conversation, I'm thinking to myself, am I adding value to this person or am I taking away? Am I taking value away? So anyway, just wanted to give you a personal reflection on something that's happened to me recently that I'm starting to catch myself. I really am. And I'm going to ask you that same question at the end. I want you to tell me, are you starting to catch yourself? Do you have some of these things that are happening to you in your own journey now that you're in the full study of John Maxwell and we're really um, uncovering some things? So what does pausing do for you? What does it do? There's four things that it can do for you. Um, learning to pause allows growth to catch up to you. So if you can learn to pause, it's gonna, you're going to grow. And there's like four different things. Okay, The first one, reflection, turns experience 
into an insight, okay? Julius Caesar says experience is the teacher of all things. And of course, J John Maxwell disagrees. Some people never learn from their experiences. They just never do. I had a sign that was in my classroom, okay? And I loved to refer to this sign that I literally typed up myself. I think I made it up. Um, and I, it was called the three ways to live. The three ways to live because I just kept on, found myself teaching the same thing in my classroom over and over and over and over again. So I just decided to make a sign and I laminated it and I stuck it on the wall. I said, guys, here, there's three ways to live. Way number one, the smart way. Learn from other people's mistakes. Number two, the hard way. Learn from your own mistakes. Or number three, the tragic way. Learn from neither of the two. Okay? So Julius Caesar is over here saying that experience is the teacher of all things. Uh, 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 not necessarily. Because I can guarantee you there's a world full of people that don't ever learn from their own mistakes, right? So people have immeasurable experiences every single day and many learn nothing from them because they never take the time to pause and reflect. And that's why it's so important to pause and let understanding catch up with us, okay? So then he talks about the company that at the very turn of the century where the, v, the car, the car has been invented and Henry Ford and all of that business starts to come around and there's this company that's a buggy whip company and they start, uh, their, they, they began their company at the turn of the century and this company soon went out of business. Why? Duh. Hello. I can't help wondering, says John Maxwell, Maxwell, what the outcome might have been if the leaders of the company had taken the time to pause, understand what their experience was trying to teach them, and make changes in the course that they were on. So just take some time to pause. Don't, like my mother said, go at something like Mach 10 with your hair on fire like a bull in a china closet. Pause, take time to reflect think about it, ask yourself some questions, and you are going to have a lot more effective outcome as a result. Number two, everybody needs a time and a place to pause. So stopping to reflect in one of the most, is one of the most valuable uh, things that people can do to grow. It has such a greater value on them than even motivation or encouragement. Um, so why? Because pausing allows them to make sure that they're on the right track. So my question is, is do you, do you have a time and a place that you set aside to reflect? Do you have a time and a place that you set aside to, re to reflect? Um, so John talks a lot about how people are so busy, just so busy. And there's so many demands on people and they rush from place to place trying to get things done. And along the way, they have these certain experiences that are called life markers in this rush busy day stuff, okay, life markers. And they go to a place or a part of an event or meet a person that in some way marks them for life because something important happened. So something really big happens to a person and that's called a life marker. And so often these markers identify them a time, identify for them a time of transition, change or transformation life markers, like a specific event that really takes them and changes who they are, okay? Reflection allows those experiences to move from being life markers to life makers, okay? Life markers to life makers. If we pause to allow growth to catch up to us, it makes our lives a lot better, uh, because we not only better understand the significance of what we've experienced, but we can implement changes and course corrections as a result, okay? We are also better equipped to teach others from the wisdom that we've gained. And, oh my goodness, that is so true. Whenever I have taken time to stop, reflect, have some personal time of growth, I have more to share with my team. I have more to say to my team. And you will too, when you stop and you think and you pause and you reflect on some things, you are not only gonna grow as a person, but you're gonna have more to share 
with your team and your prospects, the people that you're talking to. Number three, pausing with intention expands and enriches thinking. So you need to just spend some time just thinking about stuff. Spend some time just thinking. So every significant religious leader in history spent time in solitude. Everyone, okay? Every political leader who had an impact on history practiced the discipline of solitude to think and plan. Great artists uh, spend countless hours in their studios or with their instruments, not just doing stuff, but exploring their ideas and their experiences. And think about what professors do at the university level. They're given time, they're paid as university professors to think and plan and write, okay? Not just to teach and grade essays. They're thinking, they're planning, they're writing, they're publishing their works. So they're like a think tank and they're paid to do it. So a minute of thought is worth more than an hour of talk. A minute of thought is worth more than an hour of talk. So powerful, that little nugget right there. Um, John says he strongly encourages you to find a place where you can think and discipline yourself to pause and use that place. Um, because it has potential to change your whole life and it can help you to figure out what's really important and what's not so that you're going to stop wasting time on the things that are unimportant. Um, a Catholic priest named Henry J. M. Nguyen says, I hope I said that right. When you are able to create a lonely place in the middle of your actions, a lonely place in the middle of your actions, like what I did at that store the other day in the middle of your actions and concerns, your successes and failures slowly can lose some of their power over you. Just take a moment. Just take a moment to pause. If you can, sometimes it's humanly impossible to take a pause. You can't take a pause in the middle of a conversation. But I actually had the opportunity the other day. I could have paused. I did not. And all I did was act without thinking. Number four, when you take time to pause, Use your eyes, the letter I, okay? So pausing gives you four basic directions of thinking, okay? Um, investigation, incubation, illumination, and illustration. So let's talk about briefly all of them. Investigation, Galileo said this, all truths are easy to understand once they are discovered. Once you discover a truth, you can understand it, right? The point is to discover them. It takes investigation to discover basic truths, all right? Ask yourself some questions, ask questions. Um, continual growth from experiences is only possible when we discover insights and truths within them. That comes from investigation. So do some research, do some inve investigation. Incubation, taking the experience of life and putting it into the slow cooker of your mind to simmer in there for a while. Let it sit there. Um, it's like the flip side of prayer, says John Maxwell. I loved that little, um, that paradigm that he's talking in there about the flip side of prayer. He says, when I pray, I talk to God when I meditate, I listen to him. Okay, incubation is listening and learning. Listening and learning. I am continually putting quotes and ideas in my uh, mental crock pot to let them incubate. Um, and he, he says he, you could even use the Notes app on your iPhone or any other various apps that you might want to use and utilize to put some of the thoughts that you come up with during your incubation time. Um, illumination, Jim Rohn, which we love Jim Rohn, he's one of the greatest guru leaders of the world. Um, at the end of each day, you should play back the tapes of your performance. Wow, sometimes I hate those. The results should either applaud or prod you. Applaud or prod? I think prod in my case sometimes. Illuminations are like these aha moments, okay? Epiphanies when you experience sudden realization or insight. How are you gonna have an illumination unless you take time to get alone, sit quietly, investigate, investigate, incubate, so that you can come up with an epiphany? 
You know, Sarah Marble talks about how the greatest time of epiphany for her is in the shower because she's a busy mom. She's always with her kids. Husband's there. Um, they're going and they're doing stuff and she's talking to her team and always on messaging. And when she's in the shower, no one is going to interrupt her. So she can really think and ponder and come up with some ideas and she can reflect on some things and just have these great creative moments right there. So I think that's incredible. And it's very revealing that when you get alone and you're quiet, you can come up with some really cool stuff. I mean, that's your best creative time. Illustration. Most good ideas are like skeletons. They're providing good structure, but they need meat on their bones. They lack the substance until, and until they have it, they are not useful. So what would a speech be without good illustrations? Oh my goodness. If you don't have some illustrations and some examples, if you're given a speech, Oh, you have an outline and people are bored to tears. They will go to sleep. Your students, my students in my class would just completely tune me out if I couldn't relate to what I was teaching to them in real life. I'm telling you, um, everyone is looking and not many people are seeing. That's the truth. So you've got to provide an illustration or two or more. So what are some questions that you can ask yourself? These are some heart of reflection questions and John gives us 10 that we can ask ourselves and um, before I do that I'm going to read a quote by Anthony Robbins the great Tony Robbins um, he says successful people ask better questions and as a result they get better answers now I will tell you John Maxwell has another book that I have on audio I have not bought the actual hard copy version but it's called great leaders ask great questions I want to say that's the title of it I have not even listened to it yet, but that is one of his like latest books. It's one of his newest ones. Um, and I can guarantee you that is the truth. The more I'm in plexus, the more I know that that's what I need to be doing in almost every occasion. When I'm standing in front of someone, ask them questions, let them talk, let them sh talk about themselves. And when they do, they're going to love me because I'm going to listen to them. I'm actively listening and they're actively speaking and I add value to them by listening to them. And that is just, it's going to, it's going to wind up in the scenario where you are adding value to someone. The more you ask someone questions, the more you're adding value to them. And that's our ultimate cause on the planet is to help other people by adding value to them. That's one way that we can do it very quickly. Um, asking great questions ultimately cr uh, stimulates creative thinking, okay? And it's gonna, re it's gonna lead to solid convictions. You're gonna have very solid convictions as a result, and they'll help you to create a high quality life. Um, Sir Francis Bacon said, if a person will begin with certainties, he will end in doubts. Yikes. But if he will be content to begin with the doubts, he will end in certainties. And think about scientific, the scientific process, right? Um, you know, in, in chemistry, you start off with a hypothesis and you end up with a conclusion based on all of the different things that you've just done in your, um, in your laboratory experiment. So, I mean, you start off with an idea, a hypothesis, and you come to conclusions based on the results of your experiment. So I think that is very, very true. In almost every case, you start off with doubts and then you end up with certainties, the more questions you ask and that you find the answers to. Um, so what are these personal awareness questions? We're gonna go through them quickly, 10 of them. What is my biggest asset? What is my biggest asset? Okay, it's not only encouraged to continue to cultivate a positive attitude, but it has also reminded me when he does this, what is my greatest asset thing, reminded me that one of the best things I can do for others is to speak positively into their lives. Let them know that I believe in them. So his positive asset, his greatest asset is speaking words of affirmation and listening to others, adding value to others, okay? Encouraging them, encouraging people. Um, okay, what's my biggest liability? What do I have going against me here? What's my biggest liability? And John always talks about his greatest liability. Um, he says, um, no, I don't think I underlined that part. It just says that um, 
He's tempered his expectations toward others. Modifying his expectations to be more real realistic has helped him to set up his team to succeed rather than to fail. It's also helped him to create more realistic goals for the team and the organizations that they serve. So when you ask yourself, what is your biggest liability, you are really helping yourself to figure out what you're going to have to overcome in order to succeed, right? What are you going to have to work around or overcome? What is my highest high? What is my highest high? For John, it's his family, okay? What is my lowest low, okay? <laughs> and John says, for him, his lowest low has also come as a result of his family, okay? Um, what is my most worthwhile emotion? What is my most worthwhile emotion? And John talks about love. There's no more, more, more worthwhile emotion than love, according to him. Uh, love is a choice, and it often requires effort. And um, so to love others, as I would like to do, he says, I must be intentional about it and choose to love people every day. So it is a choice. We choose to love others instead of not loving them. Um, number six, what is my least worthwhile emotion? And he came up with his least worthwhile emotion is pity. Pity. Um, and he talks about the difference between pity, which is noble, pitying, pitying someone or something or an event is a noble emotion. But self-pity is very ignoble, and it just is a detriment to your soul. It puts you in a victim mode, and it detracts from, you know, he just basically goes, in this particular paragraph, talks about pity versus self-pity, um, his, his least worthwhile emotion. He describes the difference between the two. Um, what is my best habit? That's a great question. What's my best habit? Um, LP Hidden, sorry, LP Lidden, sorry about that. Chancellor of St. Paul's in London, back in the 1800s, long passed away. What do what we do on some great occasion will depend on what we are. What we do on some great occasion will depend on what we are, and what we are what we are will be the result of previous years of self-discipline. Wow, that is a deep thought. Daily disciplines. A person's secret to success is found in daily agenda. What you do on a daily basis. So what is your best habit? What is your best habit? What is it you're really good at doing every single day? I have all kinds of things I'm good at doing every single day. But there's the ones that I can't get, get done on a daily basis that really plague me. And it makes me look at those things as the big deal. Whereas the things that I do every single day, I don't. I don't let myself off the hook and say, well, at least I'm doing this. I always look at the things I'm not doing. Um, <clears throat> so what is my worst habit? For John, his worst habit is impatience. I think a lot of us could say that, impatience. Um, what, is my most what is most fulfilling to me? What is most fulfilling to me? For John, he says, communicating with other people. Mm -hmm. And it prompted him to become a better speaker the fact that it was most fulfilling to communicate with him, uh, with other people. It was one of the top areas that he dedicated himself to when, um, when it came to growth. And it helps him to stay focused so that he's doing what returns the most value to others and to himself. So he really loves to communicate with other people. And that is what's most fulfilling to him. Last one, what do I prize most highly? What do I prize most highly? Um, John says he values nothing more highly than his faith. And I think a lot of us could say something like that to that tune. Mother Teresa says, faith keeps the person who keeps the faith. Uh, Philip Yancey, who's a famous uh, modern day author today, uh, says, trusting in advance what will only make sense in reverse. That's what faith is. Okay. Self-awareness. Self-awareness. It keeps you to have a divine perspective every day and makes you more self-aware. 
Um, you can ask yourself questions in just about any area of your life that will help you, okay? And by doing so, it helps you to grow in self-awareness. If you ask yourself these 10 questions, you come to know yourself more, you come to be able to think clearer, make solid, intentional decisions on how to act, you allow your um, thoughts to catch up to your emotions. I think it's a wonderful thing to do. Okay, so then he talks about, over on page 64, about the different questions that you could ask yourself uh, regarding relationships. Like if you want to find out what you're doing regarding relationships, you can ask yourself these 10 questions like, do I value people? Do people know that I value them? How do I show it? Am I a plus or a minus in my most important relationships? Um, what evidence do I have to confirm my opinion? And oh, on and on and on. And then he talks about the 10 questions. Here's a good one. I think these two sets of questions would be really, really important to sit down and journal over. Like journal over the relationship questions and journal over the personal growth questions. In fact, you could journal every single day on one of those questions. And you would te technically have 20 full days of journal topics. That's an idea. That's an idea. Will we put that to work though? You know, we've got so much to do here. I'm starting to see that this is just the tip of the iceberg, isn't it? It's the tip of the iceberg. We are scratching the surface of personal growth and development. We are scratching the surface at becoming the best version of ourselves. We will never have arrived. We'll never have it down completely. We are gonna get better and better as time goes on and we will have more influence over people the more we grow and we will be more confident and believe more in ourselves and have a higher self-worth and a value of ourselves as well as value others the more that we continually grow. But will we have ever arrived? No, aren't you just amazed at how just, and this is a rhetorical question because you can't answer me, I've muted all of you, but when you look at these questions, you just, <laughs> it reveals how far we have to go, doesn't it? It does. Okay, so what are the 10 personal growth questions? Let me read them. Do I know and practice the 15 laws of personal growth? <laughs> which three laws do I do the best? Well, first of all, we have to learn them. Number three, <laughs> which are my weakest? Number four, Am I growing daily? Number five, what am I doing daily to grow? You can answer that. Hopefully you have something to answer with that. Hopefully you have something to answer. I do. Number six, how am I growing? Number seven, what are the roadblocks that are keeping me from growing? Number eight, what are the breakthroughs that I need to keep growing? What are the breakthroughs I need to have to keep growing? Number nine, what are the potential learning moments that I experienced today? And did I seize the moments? Ah, no, I didn't that one day. Number 10, am I passing on to someone else what I am learning? Mm. The most important thing that you must do is write out the questions and then write out the answers. If all you do is just sit there and think about it, then you are not processing. There is a reason why we have fingers instead of paws. There's a reason why we can hold a pen and there's a reason why there's studies that have been done. I know because I've re re read them and looked at them as a teacher and in and, and master's studies that literally writing, there's, there's a, a connection between the brain a motor skill that connects the brain to the hand when you see your own writing on a sheet of paper. There's thoughts that come through your head that don't come through your head if you are typing or doing something electronic. Literally cursive writing on a sheet of paper is cathartic and is slow enough that it allows you to think and produce and it's amazing. Writing is imperative. So don't just think and talk these out, write them out, okay? Writing helps you discover what you truly know, think, and believe, and that's just in a nutshell, according to Maxwell. There's plenty of um, studies that have been done on this, okay? The farther you go in your life, the more critical it is that you take time to pause and think. The older that you are, 
the less time that you have to do it, right? The older that you are, the less time that you have to stay on your purpose and do the things that you were created to do. And here's the good news. Here is the good news. If you've been diligent in your efforts to grow along the way, you will also be better equipped to fulfill the purpose, okay? To fulfill that purpose, even if it requires you to make significant changes or course corrections. Can you imagine that if you can sit down and reflect and think and answer those questions, you will stop in your tracks when you realize you're going down the wrong road. You will actually be able to identify that and make a course correction and go the other way, you know, and make, make a different direction for yourself. Um, Bob Buford wrote a book called The Second Half. This is so poignant, guys. That's why I'm going to read it. The Second Half. A lot of the people that are on this call right now are in their 30s or 40s, okay? or 50s, so we really need to listen to this. This is, we're talking about the second half of life. You will not get very far in your second half without knowing your life's mission. Can yours be stated in a sentence or two? A good way to begin formulating one is with some questions and nakedly honest answers. What is your passion? What have you achieved? What have you done uncommonly well? How are you wired? Where do you belong? What are the shoulds that have trailed you during your first half? That's so good. I'm going to read that again. What are the shoulds that have trailed you during the first half? These and other questions like them will direct you toward the self your heart longs for. They will help you discover the tasks for which you were especially made. Oh, I love that. I love that. Never forget that your goal and personal growth is reaching your potential, reaching your utmost potential. To do that, you need to keep pausing. You need to keep asking questions and you need to keep growing every day. So John talks about in the life reflection application part of the homework area over here. Number one, have you created a place where you can consistently and effectively pause and reflect. Have you done that? If not, do so immediately, right? Um, figure out the kind of environment that, that's really good for you. Among the places that he has chosen over the years are like the, a rock to sit on outdoors or um, a small isolated room where there's no one could bother him, um, a special chair in his office, um, figure out what, whatever works for you and stick with it for as, uh, for as long as it's effective. Number two, schedule time to pause and reflect. Schedule that time into your calendar. If you do not, it will always get shuffled off of your to-do list. You're going to push that off. Ideally, you should spend, get this, get this. Ideally, you should spend a short time pausing to reflect at the end of every day. Between 10 and 30 minutes. Yeah. Every day at the end of the day. That's hard. That's hard to do that because we're exhausted and we're tired and we don't want to go to bed, especially if you work full time. Um, a significant time every week, at least an hour or two, part of the day, several times a year, half of a day an extended time uh, uh, annually and as little as a day as much as a week if you do it annually. Can you believe that? I mean, have, have you ever thought about that? Have you heard about people that just take time off the grid and they go up in the mountains and they don't take a cell phone and no one can get a hold of them and, and they just recharge their battery? I mean, can you, have you ever done something like that? Well, first of all, I can't go up in the mountains because I just, I just can't do that. 
Um, for me, taking a week off would not be going to the mountains. I would have to figure that out. I've never even imagined doing that. I don't think any of us has, quite frankly. Maybe you could tell me if you have, but I mean, a significant amount of time every week, half an hour or two, part of the day, several times a year, like half of a day or a day, and an extended time annually, as little as a day up to a week, just go off somewhere and reflect. Think, write, journal. That is so far on the learning chain with me and the experiential chain. Um, okay, number three, cartoonist Henry Arnold said, the wise man questions himself and the fool questions others. Mm, boy, howdy, isn't that the truth? Become self-aware. Question yourself. Look, take a good, hard look at yourself. Look in the mirror. Last chapter, we looked at ourselves in the mirror. We still are looking in the mirror. The law of reflection is looking at yourself in the mirror, evaluating yourself, thinking, pausing, reflecting so that you can make the right choices, make the right actions, make the right moves in your life. The law of reflection will do you as little good unless you are intentional in your thinking time. You make yourself intentional by asking yourself some tough questions, which is what I'm going to ask you right now. These are the questions I'm going to ask everyone. Are you listening? Where do you most need to grow right now? This is what we're going to ask and you're going to answer it. Where do you most need to grow right now? Is it in self-management? Is there an issue that you cannot seem to wrestle down? Are you experiencing a plateau in your career? Are you failing to win at the most important relationships in your life? Wow. Do you need to examine or re-examine your purpose? Do you need to assess what you should be doing in your second half? Whatever your issue is, create questions around it and spend time writing your answer to those questions during your scheduled time or reflection. There are so many questions that have been asked in this chapter. You have an infinity of content that you could sit down and ask yourself to reflect upon. You could be reflecting for another hundred years on some of these things here. Well, maybe not a hundred years. I'm going to share screen. No, take that back. I'm going to go to gallery. And I'm going, to, um, I'm going to unmute. We're going to say goodbye to everyone, and we're going to stop recording. So here we go. Unmute. Hey, everybody. Thank you for joining us. We're going to have a session now that we don't record. So thank you for joining us, the viewing audience, and we hope to continue with us, the 15 Invaluable Laws of Personal Growth. Next week will be Chapter 5, The Law of Consistency. <clears throat> oh, my. As if we can't learn enough as in the fourth, first four chapters. Okay, so there's the end of that. We're going to stop recording. Good night, everybody.